Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing an overclocking guide for the 9800X 3E. This is probably the most popular CPU in the PC DIY or build your own PC space right now. This is the fastest gaming CPU. But today we're going to be doing an overclock guide for the 9800X 3D. This CPU, the steps that we're going to show in this video apply to any of the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. So you don't have to have this CPU if you have, for example, a 9600X or a 9700X or even the dual CCD Ryzen 9 CPUs like the 9900X or the 9950X or even the upcoming 9950X 3D. All the steps in this video apply to those as well. So the first thing to note is that this will be featuring the Asus X870E Crosshair Hero. So just to show in CPU-Z the motherboard, this is the X870E Hero. So that being said, what we want to do first, before we do an overclock, we want to get our baseline stock performance numbers. So you can run whatever benchmark you want. I typically still use Cinebench R23 because it has the big numbers. So the multi-thread on this at stock is around 22,758, and then the single core is 2,086. And then I also run the CPU-Z benchmark just as a quick one to get a reference point. So... 813 on single thread and 8,605 on the multi-thread. So make sure you note those down so that you have a reference point to refer to after you do the overclock. All right, and then for the memory that we are using, we are using G-Skill DDR5-8000. So the memory speed is synchronized between the fabric clock and the memory controller clock, so they're both running at 2 gigahertz, so you guys can see that here. And our DRAM frequency is 4 gigahertz, which means the DDR5 speed is 8000. So we've done a video on that in the past, so if you are interested in how to do that, check out the video in the card above. So now that we have our baseline, we're going to go ahead and reboot the computer and go into the BIOS and start setting the overclock. Okay, so once we're in the BIOS, a couple things to note. The ASUS Crosshair Hero shows the silicon potential score, so basically gives your CPU a score in terms of predicting how well it can overclock. So my specific 9800X3 has a score of 114, which I'm told is actually a pretty good score, so this is actually a pretty good overclocking chip. So the DRAM frequency is 8000. Everything shown in the overclock guide is for educational purposes only, so I just want to clarify that. So if you want to copy my settings, you are free to do so, assuming you have the exact same hardware. But if you don't know what you're doing and you mess something up, that is on you. Let's uh, get into it here. I've already loaded my XMP profile. If you have Expo RAM, it will show up as Expo profile here in the AI overclock tuner. But because we're using XMP RAM, ASUS changes the XMP to DOCP. So I've already loaded the XMP profile. We've been using this for a while now, since day one. First thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to change the external clock generator mode to a synchronous mode. By doing this, we allow the CPU cores to be clocked at a higher base clock frequency, I should say, because we're not actually changing the multiplier. So by turning on a synchronous mode, this basically splits the SOC clock on a separate clock generator, and then it allows the CPU cores to be timed off of its own clock generator. So there's two external clocks on the motherboard here. So the BIOS calls them base clock one and base clock two. Base clock one adjusts the frequency for the DRAM, the PCIe, and other things. We don't want to change this. We're going to keep this at 100. The one that we are going to change is going to be base clock 2, which is only for the CPU cores. So this one we're going to change to 104.5. What this does, you can think of it like 100 is basically the standard, the stock. So if we do 104.5, for example, now we are applying a 4.5% increase to the maximum frequency. This is a direct change to the overall total frequency. So this is different from using PBO. This is more 
akin to traditional overclocking, but we're not changing the multiplier, we're actually changing the base clock. So just keep that in mind. That's the main thing that we want to change here, and then everything else that we do is going to be done using the AMD overclocking menu. So this is the only thing in the ASUS menu besides loading the Expo profile or XMP profile. Now we're going to go to the advanced menu, and we're going to go down to AMD overclocking. So down here. So we're going to accept the warning here because we're overclocking. Basically what this means is we are running the processor outside of the warranted specifications. So damage that could be incurred is, you know, it's on the user here. So now we're going to go to Precision Boost Overdrive. And we're going to change this from Auto to Advanced. So in the Advanced menu, this brings up the various things like PBO. If you're familiar with overclocking AMD CPUs, PBO has been around for a while now. So what we're going to do, we can leave this on auto, or we can change it to motherboard, or you can actually manually specify settings if you really want to fine tune the settings. But for most people, you're either going to want to leave this on auto, or you can change it to motherboard. If you change it to motherboard, this is similar to running the CPU on unlimited power mode. So only do this if you have extremely good cooling. But because this guide is focusing on an air cooler, we're going to leave it on auto. So we're going to still use the maximum TDP limits and the current limits and the voltage limits specified by the stock. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler. And what this does is this allows it to basically be more aggressive with the voltage. So this is going to be the overvolting of the CPU during minute intervals where the CPU is requesting more voltage because it's trying to hit or sustain a certain speed. So what we can do here is we can either turn this up to 10 times or 10x the voltage but the higher this multiplier is, the more voltage will be applied to the CPU. So just keep that in mind. If you want to apply a more conservative value, you can do 5x. But if you want to go all out and you have very good cooling, you can very good airflow as well, you can do 10x. But what we're going to do, I'm probably just going to do, for this demonstration, we'll do 10x just to verify that it's going to hit stability so we're going to do 10x. If you don't feel comfortable doing 10x, you can do a lower number. But just keep in mind that the lower number that you go, the harder it will be for the CPU to maintain a certain target frequency. So now we're going to go to CPU Boost Clock Override and set this to Enable Positive. And here, the maximum you can put is 200. If I try to type 999, it says Invalid Input Range. So the maximum will be 200. If we do, say, 300, it's still in valid range. If we do 201, it's in valid range. So the maximum number is 200. So we're going to put 200. And then you could leave the platform thermal throttle control on auto unless you want to change the thermal throttle temperature. In this case, I do not recommend doing that, especially because we're using an X3D CPU. So we're going to leave that on auto. And then we're going to go into Curve Shaper. Now, if you're familiar with Curve Optimizer, you can use Curve Optimizer if you want, especially if you want to try to tune specific individual cores, like for example, the two best cores on the CCD. But in this guide, we're only going to focus on Curve Shaper because Curve Shaper is all that's needed when you combine that with the PBO uh, scalar controls and the override, in addition to the external clock 4.5% overclock that we've applied. So. Curve Shaper, I have another video on a deep dive into how this works. If you're unfamiliar with this, I definitely recommend you go watch that video before trying to do these blindly. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the medium or the minimum, the low, and the medium. So, for example, if we're doing medium temperature, we can enable this and we can do negative and we can do like negative 20, for example. And then if the temperature is really high, that's typically not going to happen. So we're just going to leave that on auto. When it's running at minimum frequency, it's not really going to be in the high region. It'll be in the low and the medium. But we can, we're going to leave low and high alone for me, minimum frequency. And then for low temperature, 
we're going to set this to enable negative and we're going to do 20 and then low frequency medium temperature again we're going to set this to negative 20 and then for high temperature we're going to set this one to negative 20 as well so now we're going to set medium medium and above is where it's actually going to see visible differences with how the cpu performs because typically, if you're doing an all-core uh, workload, that's going to be like Cinebench R23 multi-thread. That's going to be the medium frequency range, which is typically going to be around 4.5 to 5 gigahertz. So now what I want to do, the CPU I know is going to run hot under load here. So we're going to do enable under high temperature, negative, and we're going to do negative 20. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to repeat that for the medium low i don't think that's really going to apply here and then high frequency now what we want to do in the high frequency and the max frequency we actually want to overvolt now we don't want curve shaper to to tend toward a lower voltage because that could introduce instability that could cause the computer to blue screen or crash when you're trying to hit those high single thread values so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually set this to positive and we're going to do positive 10. Now you can do positive, I think you can do up to 15, but I'm, we're going to, for, for educational purposes, we're going to stick to 10 for positive and 20 for negative. Now you can do higher swings or lower swings if you want. So medium temperature at high frequency, that's typically going to occur. So we're going to do 10 and then high temperature. We're going to again do 10 and then the final one the max frequency max frequency <clears throat> can also apply at low so what we're going to do i'm going to do positive five for this one and then we're going to do positive 10 for the others for for medium and for high temperature we'll do 10 on these so those are the settings that we apply to Curve Shaper. Now what I'm going to do is F10 and, and review all the changes before applying them. So we're going to do a synchronous mode with a base clock to the CPU cores of 104.5 megahertz. And then we've done all of our PBO settings as shown here. And then these are all the Curve Shaper values. So now we're going to apply this overclock and get into Windows and rerun the benchmarks and verify that the system is stable and it performs better. Okay, so we can see we scored 2254 versus our original score, which was 2086. So if we do the math on that, that's about an 8% improvement, actually. So we did about 4 to 5% improvement in the Cinebench multi-thread, and we did about an 8% uplift in the single thread so that is actually pretty nice so now let's go ahead and run cpu z real quick to see what we get here this one's not as useful compared to cinebench r23 but it's a good way to get kind of like a baseline comparison here so already i can see that our single thread is significantly better so looking at this our stock performance was 813 and now we're scoring around 867 so if we do the math on that that is again that is about a seven percent improvement and then the multi-thread if we do 8605 into 8890 that's about a three to four percent uplift in the multi-thread. So the cool thing about this type of overclock leveraging external B clock is you can actually get pretty good single thread improvements on the X3D chip. And that is very good for the people who want to use this as a gaming CPU because it has quite a bit of performance uplift from boosting the base clock. So that is very interesting to see. It scales better. The overclock is showing better scaling on single thread versus multi-thread. So it'll be interesting to see how a dual CCD CPU responds to this sort of overclock. But that's going to be it for the guide on how to overclock the 9800X3D with an ASUS ROG Crosshair Hero. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. 
If you have any questions, leave a comment in the section below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.